Hey everybody, this is Mr. Shoner, and uh, I've gotten a couple emails from you guys, uh, and you guys are very curious on what the entire self-ionization of water is. So I took the time and I made this little lesson for you guys to help some of you out with your misconceptions. So, the self-ionization of water, and this comes right off of Wikipedia, is the ionization reaction of pure water, or an aqueous solution, in which a water molecule, which is H2O, deprotonates. Remember, a proton is also the same thing as a hydrogen atom. So, deprotonating is when a water molecule loses one of its hydrogen atoms, and thus, the remaining portion is your hydroxide ion. So, visually, if we had one mole, or one physical water molecule, we can have a reversible reaction that then causes it to turn into our proton, which is the H plus ion, and also our hydroxide, which is our OH ion. And if you have two moles of water now, again, they will undergo that reversible reaction, but now we're making the actual hydronium ion, and we're still making a base. Any way you look at it between the last two slides, a H plus ion or a hydronium ion, they both represent the same thing. They're cations, that means they're positively charged ions, and they're going to be what we call acids. That's based off of Arrhenius' acid rule. So if you were to look at a scale from 1 to 14, this is the pH scale, uh, 7 is going to be our neutral, 1 is acidic, and 14 is basic. And if we have any amount of water, we always know if it's just water, if you decompose it, you'll always have 50% acid and you'll also have 50% base. So on a pH scale, that means you would fall dead smack in the middle. That's, that's why water, a neutral compound, falls at 7, because water is 50% acid and 50% base. So if you look on the little graph that I made, you'll notice right now that the concentration of our solution is about 50% uh, H plus ions and 50% OH ions. And you notice on the right, we have a little menu of different things we're going to be putting into the solution. So if we were to add more acids, so if we added HCl, HCl when it ionizes or when it's dissolved in water, you'll notice there's a spike in the concentration of hydrogen ions now. And we also have a little bit of Cl minus ions. Now if we added sulfuric acid, you would notice that the concentration of the hydrogen ions again increases with the addition of some sulfate groups. You'll also notice that our pH now is dropping closer and closer and closer to one. So adding more acid into a pure water solution means you're going to increase the concentration of your hydrogen ions, thus making you more acidic. So now if we have this very acidic solution and we add some sodium hydroxide, you'll notice our concentration of the hydroxides is now increasing. And you'll notice that we are shifting back towards neutral on the pH scale. Again, the concentration of acid, the H plus ions, is greater than the concentration of the OH ions. And finally, if we were to add some more calcium hydroxide to the solution, you'll eventually realize we teeter out and we have a neutral solution again. So you're noticing right now with the additional colors on top of our starting uh, water concentration, you'll notice that they are also equal. And whenever you have that equal concentration of acid and base, that must mean you have a neutral solution. You'll also notice in the solution we have chloride ions, sulfate ions, sodium ions, and calcium ions. So in conclusion, water can self-ionize, which produces your hydroxide ions and your hydronium ions. A pH of 7 indicates that you have 50% acid to base ratio. If you add any acid, it increases the concentration of hydrogen ions, but it has no effect on the concentration of the base. And if you add more bases, you're obviously going to get more hydroxide ions, but again, this will have no effect on the concentration of your acids. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, Please come and see me.